Hello again everybody, Boyd here with you and welcome back. Well this is our very first video for 2014 on the Trekworks channel and as you can see we're kicking things off to a wonderful start here guys. You can see we've got this uh, awesome 1350 scale Polar Lights Enterprise refit kit. I'm building this one up for my customer Larry and he's asked that we do all the bells and whistles on this one guys. We're going to be doing the Aztec paint job on it. We're going to be doing the tenant controls lighting with the fading deflector dish and the firing photon board and uh, of course all the beautiful lighting on the model using the uh, photo etch parts and a lot of other goodies on this one. So many of you have written to me in the last year or so since I built my refit asking a lot of questions so we thought it'd be a great idea to go uh, take you through another one of these builds and this time we're going to slow down quite a bit guys and take you through a step-by-step -step build process that'll be uh, focused on detail rather than speed and uh, you guys will get to see a lot of those questions answered and I want to encourage you guys out there if you want to uh, see something specific as far as detail about when we build this model uh, feel, to, uh, feel free to write to me, uh, drop a line here on the YouTube channel, or you can write to me at info at trekworks.net. I'll put that up on the screen here for you guys. And you guys can drop your questions there, and we'll do every effort we can to drop that into the video series here and uh, show that particular detail as we go along. We're going to be kicking things off today, uh, starting with the uh, work on the saucer. We've got to do a little bit of grinding on that to uh, remove the parts of the inner wall and some other modifications to get ready to do our lighting on that. And so we'll be over to the bench in just a couple of seconds. I've got a couple of uh, news items I want to share with you guys. Uh, we've got some great kits coming up uh, for build on the uh, channel here. We've got an out-of-the-box review coming in the next couple days of the brand new Space 1999 Eagle kit that's been repopped by Round 2 under the MPC banner. Uh, we've got that kit uh, literally on the way here to the shop, so we'll do a nice out-of-the-box review on that kit for you. We've got some exciting builds coming up. I'm going to be building the uh, large-scale uh, Mobius uh, Lost in Space Jupiter 2 here very soon on the channel and I've got a really really big Star Trek build that's coming down the pipe guys it's uh, we're just waiting for it to arrive and it's for a client of mine and you guys I think will get really excited when you see that one we've also got a great little Randy Cooper Galileo kit resin model that's uh, nicely sized and we're gonna be building that one up here on the channel as well so a lot of cool things coming down the pipe and some other news for you guys I'll be doing a little bit of traveling I've been invited out to the uh, by the wonderful people at Jersey Fest. Now some of you out there may have heard of it. There's a great modeling show out on the East Coast. This will be taking place on August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd in New Jersey called Jersey Fest. You can find their information at uh, www.jerseyfestfair.com on the internet. And this show is second only to Wonderfest, guys. It's a huge sci-fi based modeling show. There's going to be uh, famous modelers from all over the world. And I'm extremely honored to have been asked out there by the people who run it to come out there and uh, speak and talk about my model building and painting uh, techniques that I've been doing on my channel here the last couple of years so I'm really honored to be able to do that and I'm really looking forward to it my good friend Ralph from Tenet Controls is also going to be there uh, he'll have a booth set up so you guys can stop by and ask Ralph questions and see a lot of Ralph's wonderful lighting kit products on display I'm sure he's going to have some new developments and uh, going on by then you guys will be able to check out and I'll be hanging around the booth when I'm not speaking uh, helping out Ralph to uh, answer questions and get things going there so I hope you guys will uh, stop by and we'll be able to chit chat for a little bit I wanted to announce this uh, early on so you guys could make plans for it and uh, you know August is uh, several months away yet so hopefully we'd love to see a lot of you guys out there it's a wonderful show and again you can look that up at uh, www.jerseyfestfair.com I'll put that on the screen again here for you and uh, have a look at what they've got going on like I mentioned they've got a great model building contest with some wonderful builds they'll have several uh, very established and well-known modelers from around the country there doing seminars talking about how to do things so it's a great opportunity to hang out and uh, learn more about the model building hobby guys so I'm really excited about it and uh, another exciting things come up along the line here guys uh, my good friend Paul Olson who you guys remember is the man who painted the Enterprise refit for Star Trek the motion picture that came up with that original beautiful Aztec paint job uh, Paul has asked me to come out to LA this April Paul's gathering the entire crew uh, with, which includes Richard Taylor and Jim Dow who actually built the model and several of the other people that work very hard behind the scenes to create the models and miniatures for Star Trek the motion picture we're going to be having a nice get together out there and I'll be uh, doing a taped interview uh, with Paul and his crew and we're going to be talking a lot about the behind the scenes and how the Enterprise was made and that along with the other uh, a lot of the other miniatures that were used in the movie and I'm really excited about that and I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me Paul I really appreciate it and I'm really looking forward to it. Paul and I have gotten to be pretty good friends and he's a great guy. He's coming all the way over from England to do that and I'm really looking forward to it. And That's going to take place around April or so. 
and I'll have a few uh, uh, behind the scenes snippets of that. Uh, they're actually going to be pr producing a, a documentary for the whole thing, so uh, that'll come out at a later date, and I'll pass along more information about that as I get. But it's very historic and very important to a lot of Star Trek fans like myself. I know a lot of you guys will be excited about that. Star Trek The Motion Picture was probably one of the least documented movies of all of them, especially the behind the scenes, so I'm really excited about that. And uh, I'll also be bringing you lots of video and lots of uh, pictures and things from Jersey Fest when I return, too. So a lot to look forward to, guys. Okay, guys, well, that's enough, enough excitement for now. Uh, time to grab some popcorn and sit back. We're going to start our uh, Enterprise refit build. We're kicking things off in grand style here in 2014 on the channel. So we'll see you on the bench in just a couple of seconds, guys. We'll be right back for the start of our Enterprise refit build. Here we go. Okay, everybody, well, here we are on the bench, and we're kicking things off on our Polar Lights 350 scale refit build here. And I'll explain what I've started with here first, guys. First of all, uh, I've washed all these parts uh, to remove the uh, mold release agent. I've soaked these in some warm water with some Dawn dishwashing detergent and uh, scrubbed them down very well. So we want to make sure uh, that we've removed all the grease and oil and everything off of these parts because we're going to be doing a lot of uh, paint masking on these uh, parts here, especially with all of our Aztec paneling as we get along and our uh, highlighting colors that we're going to do around the BC deck and some of the paint detail areas that we're familiar with on the uh, refit model here. So we want to make sure we've got a really nice surface. Now what I've also done now is I've completely uh, scuffed this whole entire surface down using some 600 grit sandpaper and uh, just went along and taken the uh, shiny uh, sheen off of this entire uh, surface. Uh, when we get ready to start applying our primer and our paint on this, we'll be uh, starting off first with a uh, uh, coat of uh, uh, adhesion promoter, which you guys uh, have seen me use quite often here on the channel, but for some of you, of you new people, you haven't seen it yet. Uh, this is a uh, product made by DuPont, and uh, what this basically does is it's uh, sprayed down onto your bare plastic here and creates a superior adhesion with your primer so that... Uh, you won't have issues with paint lifting off or chipping or things like that when you're applying uh, masks later to this or masking tape and things so it's going to give us a superior bond and uh, the next step I've taken uh, from there guys is we've started to work on the bottom side here and I'll explain what we're doing here now we've got to install lighting in this model in these various locations here and you can see that this uh, saucer has this ridge that's molded all the way around the edge here and I'm going to get you a little bit closer in on this. And you can see that uh, in each one of these spots here where we have a light source, being where our navigation lights are and where our uh, some of our thruster locations are located here on the top of the saucer, we have little uh, areas where we're going to install some LEDs. And so what I've done is I've used a tool to uh, grind part of this wall away so that we have enough space to mount some LED lights in here and have our wiring come through this and into the center and then obviously out down through the neck when we get that far. Uh, one of the uh, things that I'll show you here, and I haven't shown this before, is uh, I have this little air tool here which I use for grinding uh, and this is a, uh, it has a uh, metal cutting bit here on the end which is called a knurling tool and I like to use this because this works at high speed. I'll go ahead and hook it up to air really quick here just to uh, give you an example and um, I can control this quite well and it works a lot faster and it's a lot more powerful than a Dremel tool. Uh, trying to Dremel all these out takes a long time. My Dremel doesn't have the torque and the uh, RPM to do a really good job on that and remove the material really quickly. Now that little tool is available at most any uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, or Harbor Freight if you have one in your area. Again, it's this particular one's made by uh, Chicago Pneumatic and the little tip here, or this accessory tip, is uh, available as well. And being that it's a metal carbide uh, tip here, using it on plastic, it will last you absolutely forever. So for around twenty dollars, thirty dollars or so, you can buy that whole setup and use it for many different things. And uh, I use it quite frequently. I don't think I've ever showed it in any of my work here before for you guys, but uh, I use it quite often for removing uh, material and things like that. It sure beats the heck out of using a Dremel. But uh, let me tighten back on, uh, up on this again for you. And you can see that we've gone around now and removed the uh, area here for each of the uh, spots where we're going to have individual lighting in place. And uh, so we're going to be able to mount our LED and have clearance there. 
Now the next step is that we can see here is that uh, we've got this wall that's uh, all the way around the inside here and you can see it's located uh, just inside of the ridge here and so what we're going to have to do is uh, we're going to have to put our outside walls in place here uh, where our window locations are and we're going to have to remove this area here as well so that we can get when we mount our uh, LED strip light uh, for our window lighting in place we want to make sure that that will go through there and clear. So what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to grab the uh, uh, pieces for the uh, uh, outer ring here for the, the uh, window slots on the model and we'll sort of mock these on here and, and we're going to take our black magic marker and we're going to mark these locations here where we need to remove this material. So uh, let me uh, round those parts up here for you guys. We'll come back and get that mocked up and make our marks and we'll do a little bit of grinding on this. We'll be right back with that. Alright everybody, so here we are. We're getting ready to go and we're going to start doing our grinding here. You can see I've started on a little section right here and I've removed uh, some of this inner uh, structure here, uh, which is a wall that's interfering with our light being able to go through and get to our windows. I've gathered up all of these uh, outer uh, panels here which are our window uh, panels here for the model and I've lined these up around the saucer and then I've marked the locations on each one of these as far as my uh, gaps that I need to uh, remove the material here to uh, pass light through them. Now one thing that's very important is you want to keep track of on this model if we flip this saucer over we notice that we have uh, these two particular panels uh, that I'll show you here uh, which are important to get in the correct location and this is where the airlock uh, the main airlock door assembly is located on the uh, port side of the saucer here and you want to make sure that you put those in the proper place uh, you can see in the shot here that they uh, they butt together like this and we'll be covering that little area up there later in the build with some of our paragraphic photo etch detail parts but it's very important that you locate those in the correct location here which is uh, right uh, lined up with the uh, uh, navigation light uh, placement here on the uh, port side on the upper part of the saucer. The rest of these are pretty self-explanatory. You can see that we have the little indent here uh, which goes along the uh, 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 impulse deck area and of course we have the rec deck window here which is this unique uh, double rectangle slotted area which is uh, located uh, uh, just on the uh, starboard side of the uh, impulse output and so uh, we've gone we've gone through and lined all these up and marked the locations as you can see here so what I'm getting ready to do is start grinding the rest of this out and again I mentioned a second ago that I use this nice tool for that it, it really works fast uh, I've already removed one section here I'm gonna work the next section now for you and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do this I'll turn this uh, uh, down for you on the video so it doesn't drive you crazy. It's extremely loud and I'm, I'm going to be wearing some earplugs. You want to wear earplugs uh, when you're working with a tool that's this uh, loud and high pitched. But you'll see how it makes really quick work of this thing. Let me get you uh, tightened up on it a little bit here and uh, we'll start grinding away guys. So cover your ears. Here we go. Okay everybody, well you can see we've uh, knocked that wall down fairly quickly here with our nice uh, grinding tool here. And we'll just have to come back and do a little bit of cleaning up on that with our hobby knife and get rid of a little excess flash and things like that. But I'll be going around the rest of this whole thing now and getting all this cleared out. 
and uh, we'll show you the results of that when we come back here in just a second guys and then um, what we're going to be doing after that uh, is uh, we're going to go up on the top side here and we're going to take you through some interesting modifications uh, a lot of you guys have asked about this particular modification and what we're going to be doing here is we're going to actually be uh, relocating the bridge uh, slightly forward here and we're going to be raising it up just a little bit so that we can get our nice uh, floodlight effect here casting out onto the forward part of the registry number uh, we don't want to do anything crude like mounting an LED in here and uh, it just really takes away from the effect of uh, how they should look and I'm actually going to show you some pictures from one of our guys over at uh, uh, the Sci-Fi Model Action Forums who goes by the username of Garbaron maybe some of you guys have seen his uh, beautiful build of his refit and uh, he's actually got some photos that show that the model kit actually is off just a little bit as far as the uh, profile and that the bridge should indeed in fact be mounted just a little bit further forward here on the model to match the profile of the original uh, studio model and I've got a picture of that that I'll show where he actually took some measurements and showed a, a profile of the two side by side so by modifying this and moving this a little bit forward will allow us to mount some SMDs in here and get that nice uh, bright forward flood lamp uh, look that we want to have shining down to get that uh, uh, accurate to the studio uh, model and uh, doing this with Raytheon lighting like I said is not really the way to go uh, doing some small Raytheon lighting such as I did on my refit around the nacelles and things is, is uh, it, it can look pretty good but trying to do large areas it, it tends not to look very nice and again uh, putting an LED here in the front is not the proper way to do this either we want to do this so it looks a lot more uh, screen accurate and this is something that a lot of you guys have asked about so let me go ahead and finish grinding off the rest of these uh, walls on the inner side and then we're going to come back and we're going to remove our uh, tabs from here on the bottom of the bridge and we're going to also uh, grind down these uh, little lips right here on the top so that we can get this all smoothed out and ready to uh, slide our bridge a little bit farther forward guys so be right back with that in just a second okay everybody well we're back with you again here and you can see I've gone around the saucer now and I finished uh, grinding out all these uh, edges all the way around we've made sure to take these down all the way nice and flush here on the surface so that when we mount our LED tape in here we're not going to cast any shadows or anything like that up into our window lighting and things turned out really good on this and uh, so we're getting uh, some nice forward progress on this one guys uh, you can see what I've also done here in the center I'll tighten up here for you a little bit on it uh, you can see that we've uh, remove this material here in the center I carefully laid my bridge on the top here and mark this off and just use my uh, grinding tool to remove this we're gonna pass light up through this and uh, we're gonna then be uh, able to light the uh, side windows and everything for the bridge now up next guys on the next video we're gonna take you into uh, modifying the bridge so that we can move the bridge further forward uh, to achieve our nice floodlight effect that we were talking about and we'll be back with that in the next video, and we'll take you through that whole process step by step, guys. So things are off to a great start here on the Enterprise Refit. We'll be back in the next couple of days, guys, with more on the Enterprise. So we'll see you then. And until then, like we always like to say at TrekWorks, everybody, take care out there, and happy modeling, everyone.